it's your boy Jess B and welcome back to the Jess B show y'all we are on episode three of season three of people on the rise y'all I hope y'all ready because it's about to go down now today y'all see this is a very very different episode y'all we got merch we got products you know, we out here advertising, and I know you see this dapper gentleman right now. Now, let me tell you about this man right here, right? I had no idea who he was. He hit me up, and he was like, yo, I want to be on the show. And I was like, all right. I seen he was in a suit and stuff, and I was like, you know what? <laughs> you, you might all know, you know what I'm saying? But we made it happen. And after talking to him, when he mm -hmm. pulled up to Cash Valley Music Studios, y'all, I realized, mm -hmm. like, it's not only a blessing, but it's an honor. We got my boy RT from the Homie Cannabis in the Jess B building, y'all. And we about to get it popping, man. How you been today, brother? It's all love, man. It's all love. I appreciate uh, you having me. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Uh, it's important, you know, for me and, and the Homie Cannabis team to, you know, support uh, black media. Yes, sir. Support uh, media that's, uh, you know, coming up, that's speaking to the streets, that's speaking to the people. So Las Vegas, stand up. Stand up. This is not a drill. This is definitely not a drill. Holler at your boy RT. And so it's important uh, for us to really be supportive of one another. You know, I can do all the, you know, mainstream media and uh, some of the major uh, outlets, but it's important uh, to support shows like this. Uh, you know, last week I was on Power 88. Okay. And so, you know, the People Station. And so, you know, I got to stop by your show and show some love and I appreciate my people connecting with you and us being able to coordinate and collaborate and have me on and talk about homie cannabis and hey, I so you know let the it. folks know uh, in Las Vegas uh, that this is not a drill it's going down you said you wanted your own cannabis brand from a person of color on the shelf that wasn't a celebrity pot rapper well, you're about to get your wish, homie cannabis. This is not a drill, homie cannabis. Project inspired, hood approved. I'm with it. It's going down, baby. That's one of them swoosh. <laughs> Bam. This is not a drill. I can definitely dig mm -hmm. it, man. Yo, whoever reached out for him or whatever the case may be. I mean, you got people reaching out for you. You're a boss out here, brother. Hey, but whoever reached out, man, let me just say thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I, I definitely appreciate the support 100%. Mm -hmm. Like, I, um, I, I never knew that this would take me to, you know, this level of the kind of people, mm -hmm. the kind of influential people that I've been meeting lately, man. Mm -hmm. So on the Just Be Show, man, just be yourself. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. We're going we gonna, to we gonna run through the timeline and all mm -hmm. of that, and we're just going to go with it, man. Absolutely. Um, I know you don't know much about me, man. Uh, I, I got a history of computers. I'm a computer mm -hmm. geek, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I got tattoos, computers, and everything. That's right. I love computers, man. I've been in customer service. But I've always been an entrepreneur. That's you know, right. I've always been an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. I started out motivational speaking, mm -hmm. you know, and then some stuff happened, some unfortunate situations happened. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? Let me tell y'all. I, I thought it was unfortunate when the pandemic happened, but then I realized mm -hmm. that it, it gave me the platform. It gave me the push mm -hmm. to really step into my purpose, mm -hmm. you know. So even, even being a, a, a black, having a black show, mm -hmm. even though we, we interview everybody, mm -hmm. you know, so feel free. Feel free to reach out because we can get you on the show. Mm -hmm. And you could be sitting here like my man RT right here. We can get it popping, man. So, mm -hmm. RT, just t tell the people a little bit about yourself. I, I need to know, too. <laughs> you know, give, give them a little rundown of, of where you come from, brother. Like, but, you know, it's really, uh, it's really a story. You know, sometimes it's a cliche, but, you know, this is, uh, this is real talk. You know, like when I talk about homie cannabis, man, real product, real people, real talk. You know, you got a person that, uh, you know, I come from the hood. So you see that a lot in the messaging and the message behind Homie Cannabis. And I'm proud of that. Uh, from the hood to Howard University is what I talk about. And just because you get to a certain level, supposedly, or you begin to move around in, uh, in new circles, or you're allowed to, you know, you, you definitely want to show some respect and pay some respect uh, to your people in the hood and the projects. And I try to live my life in, in, in the construct of not ever really leaving you know, people talk about, you know, when you, you make it to a certain point or you think you've made it to a certain point, you know, you want to go back to the hood. Yeah. You know, I take the premise that, you know, uh, the real cats and the real ladies in the hood, they know that, you know, you never should have left to begin with. The hood is not something you should have to go back to for a visit. 
and uh, and show off. Right. You know, right. Uh, I was usually, about to say that. Usually it's to show off. <laughs> you know, let folks know, oh, you know, you got the dress and you got the red bottom shoes and and you got the Hugo Boss suits and the, and the, and the, and the 2021 Range Rover. Don't go back to the hood to show off. You should have never left the hood to begin with. Right. And so uh, the company and the concept is rooted in the hood mm -hmm. and showing folks that it's okay to engage, connect, collaborate with corporate America in this construct with corporate cannabis and still have messaging and friends and associates that are involved in your project and involved in your business and even in the brand tagline of the product itself right. be project inspired, hood approved. And so, uh, you know, I'm fortunate enough uh, as an only child, my mom and my aunts, uh, you know, raising me and sacrificing and in investing in me uh, to be able to, you know, matriculate, navigate, uh, go on to Howard University. And, uh, you know, I had a, a heck of a freshman class, a sophomore yeah. class. I was in, uh, me and Puffy, or you guys call him Diddy, a oh, brother love. Oh, man. Uh, P. Diddy, you know, me and Puff, uh, we were in uh, in uh, school together. Okay. In class, about three different classes together. And uh, went on to, you know, uh, have a friendship. And some other key, uh, you know, Howard alumni, HU, Vice and Stand Up. And, uh, you know, I started, uh, you know, my career in, in many regards, in terms of what you're doing, uh, in terms of marketing, mm -hmm. media, uh, transitioned into business development, uh, business analysts, okay. uh, marketing and, and branding and product management uh, at a high level. Uh, I used to work uh, for one of the uh, sharks on ABC Shark Tank. The damn Shark uh, Tank, y'all. You know, that's tank. right, Shark Tank. <laughs> uh, Kevin Harrington is, uh, is my former boss. Uh, so I had a chance uh, to work uh, for the Harrington Brothers okay. and work uh, in terms of marketing and branding and distribution worldwide uh, in the home shopping space, direct response, uh, retail, and the like. Uh, I was actually the, uh, the rep for our company with okay. HSN uh, when Puffy uh, did uh, uh, Unforgivable, Cologne. Okay. Puffy sold out, what? crushed it, <laughs> and, uh, you know, Sean John uh, crushed it. Uh, you know, so shout out to the whole Sean John team uh, back then. They still putting it in, Jeffrey Tweedy uh, and the gang. But, um, you know, it's just uh, it's been a real journey for right. me to get to this place and this space. Uh, I was able to start off at a very grassroots level mm -hmm. by actually uh, volunteering. Okay. Uh, for some of the legislative uh, initiatives that were taking place uh, down in Florida uh, to help get uh, medical marijuana passed. And that took me to, to really look beyond the political side and really try to focus in and drill down on the economics of the plant. Okay. And one of the biggest things that, you know, I was able to recognize, realize, and understand like so many have, you know, recently, but back then, you know, I'm talking 2015, 2014, uh, was that, you know, this would be an industry that would explode right. if the legislation what? is changed, not only for medicinal purposes, but recreational purposes, full adult use, if you will, that this was going to be, and what it is now, the biggest growing industry in America since alcohol and prohibition. Yeah, and, and uh, it's, it's, it's just it's exploding. Growing, growing. It's, it's exploding. <laughs> it blew up. You Boom. Know, now it's finally, uh, you know, had uh, legalization passed in Congress today. The Moore Act passed in the House, and now it's uh, on its way uh, to the Senate okay. uh, for a vote. So that is uh, historical in the construct of decriminalizing marijuana at the federal level and also. Uh, expunging the records of those that have been convicted of marijuana possession uh, offenses. Right. And so for many of the communities that have been impacted by the war on drugs, uh, particularly minorities, mm -hmm. uh, today's uh, passage of the Moore Act is certainly a step in the right direction for the industry as a whole. But getting back uh, to me, you know, I was able to uh, consult uh, for some of the brands, okay, and uh, and I uh, I said to myself, I can continue to try to pivot and pursue uh, doing homey cannabis with one of the larger corporate companies, 
And I actually engaged and had talks with one of the corporate players, a major corporate player. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, <laughs> they, uh, actually it's another one, and they actually said, man, homie cannabis, uh, wow. And this is your marketing strategy and plan and, you know, your distribution channels and the niche that you want to target. And, uh, and this was last year, okay. uh, the summer of last year, 2019. And the corporate entity that I had engaged in at mm -hmm. that juncture, they said, RT, we love it, but not right now. Mm. But sometimes a corporate no Turns into turn an independent into yes. Independent yes. <laughs> this is not a drill. That's right. Sometimes a it. corporate no can turn into an independent yes. I love it, man. So I said uh, Black Friday 2019 that I would quit my job, uh, that I would take my own resources, my own money, because as you know, cannabis is still a Schedule One drug at the federal level, so you cannot get a traditional bank loan or go through the traditional financial institutions for lending purposes, you have either have to go through uh, venture capitalists or get private equity money or, uh, you know, family and friends. I'm glad you told or, me that. Or, 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 or use your own money. <laughs> so I know, the, I, know, I know the folks over at Wells Fargo are tired of seeing me, but, uh, <laughs> you know, and I'm tired of seeing them. But uh, I just said, heck, you know, I uh, am willing to take the risk uh, to put forth the time, the energy, the effort, the dedication, the discipline, the 14 to 16 hours a day, six days a week, four gotcha. hours on Sunday. Got gotcha. to. And go and drain my own bank account to make this happen. Got gotcha. to. And with the hopes that at the end of the day, all day, every day, that uh, people of color and the larger community that embraces and supports mm -hmm. us will be supportive of homie cannabis. They said they wanted to see a little homie win for a change. They said they wanted to wrap their arms around something we can be proud of that's a quality product that's from one of our own, uh, that's not a, one of the celebrity uh, pot rappers, as right. I call them. Right, right. You know, uh, and uh, this is their opportunity. Uh, so certainly I'm going to step up to the plate and try to provide uh, a brand and an image and bring a new image to cannabis, particularly for black men in cannabis, uh, and to uh, reflect you know, those core values, uh, you know, for those in the hood and the projects. Did y'all see And we can face? get down. He determined, determined, y'all. Determined, He bro. said that with strength and passion that's for right. reals, man. And y'all know right. that's what the Just Me Show is about. That's right. People on the rise, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And he's obviously on the mm -hmm. rise to mm -hmm. greater things um, uh, for uh, for the black community. And, and I respect it, man, 100%. Mm -hmm. um, it's one thing that you did say. Uh, you, you know, you don't want to leave the little homies out. Now, mm -hmm. speaking about the little homies, you also mentioned about, you know, people that leave the hood and come back and then try to show out a little bit. Mm -hmm. But let me tell y'all this. Th this, is, this is the point I wanted to get at. It, it's, remember, we all have to stand on a foundation mm -hmm. to build any empire. Mm -hmm. Any empire has to have a foundation. Think mm -hmm. about this, your house. Say if you live in an apartment, right? Mm -hmm. Your apartment ain't just gonna float in the sky. We ain't got to that point yet. Mm -hmm. It has something underneath it that's holding it up. Mm -hmm. That's where it started. And then the stairs, if you upstairs, you gotta walk up the stairs. That's right. To get to your unit, to get to that's your right. sanction, your that's sanctum. Right. That's you know right. what I mean? So anybody mm -hmm. that has made it, including myself, mm -hmm. including yourself, if, if once you get there, Yo, don't, don't, don't act like, don't, don't be, get don't, new. Yeah, don't, don't get brand don't new. Get don't, new. Don't shy don't away extra. from, don't shy away from 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 what you stand for, mm -hmm. you know, your foundation is where you stand is what you can stand on, y'all. That's right. So make sure, just make sure that you always remember where you come from. Mm -hmm. Always have a vision of where you're going, mm -hmm. and let's get to it. That's Simple right. as that, man. You got I almost want to take my mic off and walk out. <laughs> <laughs> you might can right. run the Just Me show. That's right. <laughs> this is not a drill. This is not a drill. Yeah, that's what's up, man. So, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, look, let me ask you a fair question mm -hmm. um, uh, about, homie, about cannabis in general. Okay. Are, do you consume? Are you a consumer? Occasionally, yes. Okay. I do. I uh, and when I do, it will be generally on Sundays. Okay. You know, I, I, I try to, you know, stay to a regimen during the course of the week mm -hmm. with all the hours that uh, that I have and all the different things, moving parts uh, that I have going on. You know, this is a true uh, undertaking that involves not just a lot of long hours and hard work, but there's a lot of moving parts. Mm -hmm. And I've always said this, uh, you know, that. When it comes to people of color, 
We already know the cannabis game. We already know it. Uh, you know, and we know more about it than anybody else. Uh, you know, blacks and Latinos, we have a master's degree, and in some cases, a PhD in the cannabis game. From the streets. Up and down the supply <laughs> chain. That's right. We know cultivation, production, packaging, shipping, hiding, transporting. <laughs> I <He> said hiding. <laughs> trafficking from state to state. We know about the dope house, the trap house, and any other house. Uh, we have a master's degree and a PhD in the cannabis game. Right. And so really that motivation come in full circle in 2019 into 2020 was to say, how in the world did it get to be where we got the biggest industry mm -hmm. since alcohol and prohibition, but minority representation is so low, 4%. Blacks, 6% Latinos, yeah, was, and even worse for other uh, minorities. And that's the, the, the part that many people look at is just the licenses. Well, when you go up and down the supply chain in terms of cultivation, production, where are we? In terms of third-party testing, the lab, where are we? In terms of packaging and labeling, where are we? And then when you get past packaging and labeling, you got the actual physical packaging. Somebody right. has to take the product and put it in the bag, put it in the jars, put it in the pre-roll tubes. Mm -hmm. That's the literal packaging. What about the, the legal? What about the accounting? Uh, somebody to help facilitate P&L and accounts payable and receivable. What about security? Mm -hmm. What about the delivery? Somebody has to go and get the product and deliver it to the dispensary. That's a business in and of itself. We need to be in all we them We need to spots. be all of it. And all then, you know, spots. we focus in, uh, you know, sometimes on, uh, you know, being, uh, having, getting a license. Okay. We're, gr uh, we're woefully inadequate social equity programs. We don't have licenses. We don't own dispensaries right here in Las Vegas, world-class city, 40 million visitors. How many black owned dispensaries in Las Vegas? One. Wait for it. One. What? In 2020, there's one black owned dispensary in Las Vegas. Wow. Wow. And he right. just happens to be Frank Hawkins, the owner, Big CEO of Nevada Wellness. Shout out and much respect to my friend and most of all, my mentor, my guide, my coach, Frank Hawkins. Uh, he is very involved in providing me with input, guidance, direction, constructive criticism every step of the way, as well as Herb Washington, yeah, another important uh, cannabis uh, entrepreneur, owns several dispensaries, owns an indoor grow here in Las Vegas. And of course, uh, Mr. Washington and Mr. Hawkins know each other. So I'm grateful and thankful and much respect to Mr. Hawkins being in my right ear and Mr. Washington being in my left ear, helping to guide me every step of the way. And I just want to say, anytime you go into business, whoever you are, however smart or thorough you think you are, mm -hmm. uh, if you're a young entrepreneur, uh, particularly a minority entrepreneur, make sure you take the time and make the time to identify and find mentors, people who have already traveled down the roads and paths that you wish to go, who scraped their knee, uh, took some hits, lost some money. Uh, it will just make your journey uh, hopefully a little bit easier, but it'll be uh, much more enlightening and insightful for you. If you can be slow to talk and quick to listen, yeah. Uh, and, and, and grab your pen and pad and humble yourself and take some guidance and take some constructive criticism. And so, you know, that's the way in which I operate. Yeah. This is not the RT yeah, show. Yeah. I, I listen to Mr. Hawkins and I listen to Mr. Washington. <laughs> so thank you to both men. Yeah, yo, big shout out to Herb Washington and Frank Hawkins. That's blessings, right. Blessings to you, brothers, yo. That's let right. Me, let me give a shout out to my mentors as well. Brandon Ward, motivational speaker and author. Mm -hmm. I love you, boy. He helped me with so much. Mm -hmm. Shanta Gibson, Queen G Live experience. Shout out to you, Queen. I love you too, girl. Keep killing it. But what he's saying to everybody out there is get you a mentor, yo. Mm -hmm. what, the, the easiest way to say it in the just be terms is uh, learn how to shut up and listen. That's right. Be teachable. That's right. Coachable. Period. Teachable. Be teachable, yes. coachable. Because mm -hmm. you don't know it all. I don't That's know right. it all. I, I might. I, you, you, you guys, as the audience, may feel like I've been doing this mm -hmm. forever. You right. know, I'm, I went I'm to just, college. Yeah, I'm just now. I got two into degrees. It. Yeah, I'm just. I know what I'm doing. It. I'm getting into it, and I'm learning. It's right. a learning curve. You know, I, I learn from the 
from the Brandon Wards, mm -hmm. the Shanta Gibsons, the Trent Sheltons, mm -hmm. the, uh, e the hip hop preacher, E.T. Mm -hmm. Eric Thomas, mm -hmm. you know, the Les Browns, mm -hmm. uh, Grant Baldwin, all of these people. That's right. I just listen and, I, and, I'm, and I'm coachable and I'm <laughs> teachable. And I mean, That's of right. course, I can't reach out to all of them, That's but... Right. You know, I, I do what I can, man, and mm -hmm. I just learn. So, yo, for every entrepreneur that's coming up in the world, no matter what industry, no matter what your niche is, mm -hmm. be teachable, mm -hmm. be coachable, mm -hmm. and learn how to shut the mm -hmm. and listen, y'all, and right. listen. So let me let me ask you this, brother. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, we you named all of this stuff, and by whoa, mm -hmm. that's all I can say. Whoa, because mm -hmm. I didn't know any of that, man. You're very well spoken, but you obviously are out. You're set out on a mission mm -hmm. to reach a goal. Mm -hmm. But why do you think other black men are not willing to do that? Why? Why? Are, why are you one of the first to start? You know what I mean? Besides, mm -hmm. or Washington and Frank Hawkins. Mm -hmm. uh, what, I, I, what do you think it is? I think uh, you know what has happened uh, with regards to a number of products, services, and solutions, regardless of what the brand is in the marketplace. Uh, for people of color, particularly blacks and Latinos, we continue to operate mm -hmm. off of a consumer-only model. Okay. And uh, we consume everything. Whatever the product is, you know, sneakers, alcohol, you know, wine and spirits, uh, you know, cannabis, you know, we make up people of color 60% plus of the consumer base of the end user. Okay. And, you know, homie cannabis is really more than just a, a, a brand, a cannabis brand. I didn't start this just to simply, you know, uh, sell people some reefer and some gummies. You know, this is really about capturing the consciousness of the cannabis community and, and, and really uh, connecting with the culture. And so, you know, I tell people all day, every day, I'm on a mission. You know, this, this is a mission, this commission of the people, by the people, for the people understand that this is a mission. It's bigger than just, you know, selling some pot. And um, it's really to get us to rethink uh, and rene re uh, renegotiate our relationship with, uh, with, with corporate America. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, cannabis. To say, wait a minute here. How can we get some respect at the register? We have to renegotiate our relationship and move beyond simply being consumers and think about equity, think about jobs, think about what are we getting uh, in terms of our ROI? What are we getting back in terms of our investment into said product, into said service and or solution? What are we getting in terms of licenses? What are we getting in terms of senior level positions? What are we getting in terms of seats on the board of directors? In this case, uh, for, for cannabis and dispensaries, if we're going to be 60 plus percent of the consumers and mm -hmm. you're going to stand in line at dispensaries in Las Vegas, L.A., Chicago, Detroit, all the cities I've been to a lot in the last year, you mean to tell me you're going to walk into a dispensary and continue to patronize that particular uh, dispensary and never bother to ask the manager, the GM, the bud tender, excuse me, do you have any products on the shelf that's owned by people of color. A Latino person, black, Asian, Native American. Right. Any products on the shelf that we own that we can support. It is inexcusable in 2020, going into 2021, for us to be negligent in that lane. Right. We've got to be more conscious to say, hey, we've got to get something in return for patronizing that business. And in the construct of this conversation, since you know I have a, a, a cannabis company, mm -hmm. I'm encouraging people of color, particularly my Latino uh, brothers and my black brothers and sisters and all of those who support inclusion and diversity and unity and access to retail to be more mindful when they make purchases to say, we'll patronize this company, this brand, but what's the ROI? And if we're not getting a real return on investment in terms of equity, jobs, seats, et cetera, then we can no longer patronize this brand in good faith. When they decide to pivot, not just their, their marketing and messaging, but, but start to do things that are very uh, measurable mm -hmm. and tangible in terms of inclusion and diversity, then we can revisit patronizing 
that company right. or that business right. or that brand. So, you know, I've just been really uh, sharing the message that it's time for people of color to renegotiate their relationship and get some respect at the register. Right. Las Vegas has a ton of dispensaries. Nevada is a full adult use market. We're standing in line. We make up 60% of the consumer base. And to continue to go into Las Vegas dispensaries, and there are no products or very few on the shelf owned by a person of color, particularly black and Latino, is uh, the audacity of that. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. So, you know, I, I'm somebody that instead of just doing a lot of talking, do a lot of talking. It's time to do some A lot of talking. It's time to do some walking. No, it's, it's time to say, okay, I'm not going to stand on the sidelines complaining, mm -hmm. complaining about the situation, complaining about the lack of social equity licensing that affords minorities the opportunity to get in the game, get in the game at the dispensary level. And then even if we do get the uh, license uh, through a social equity uh, a program, how many people of color actually have the resources after they award us the license to build, open, maintain, and sustain an actual dispensary? Right. Staff it, hire the people, security, and the like. And often what's overlooked as we're trying to get to be cultivators and packaging or get a, a social equity license for a dispensary, we've often overlooked the most basic element of the supply chain is what? The product itself. How many of us are saying, wait a minute, everybody can't have a, have a, a, a license to own a dispensary or a lab or go into the legal side or the delivery side or the security side or be cultivators and grow the product. Somebody has to be focused on the actual product itself, the finished product that's right. sitting on the shelf. Right. There's an end game to this, and that's a product that is sold to the end user, the consumer. So why not focus on owning the darn product that's sitting on the shelf. That always happens. Always. <laughs> anyway, it's not a drill. So, you know, Maybe, I'm, I'm, I'm stepping up just yeah, me, yeah, and I'm yeah. just saying, hey. So, let, let me ask this, mm -hmm. you know, and, and some people may take offense to this, but I, I do a lot of research and I study people. Mm -hmm. I have to. I'm, I'm on podcast. That's right. You know what I'm that's saying? Right. I have to study people. Mm -hmm. But this is a genuine question I want to know, man. Sure. Uh, and I need a genuine answer. Mm -hmm. You know, don't, don't. Don't give me the corporate answer. Okay. Give me the man from the neighborhood. That's right. That answer. That's you right. You know what I mean? So I've noticed that it's always been really, really hard for black people to get together to do anything. True. The most that I've seen black people rise up and stand, stand mm -hmm. and, con and conquer some stuff mm -hmm. has been in the recent events in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, after George Floyd, rest in peace, mm -hmm. then it was like everybody wanted to speak up. Mm -hmm. Then we got the Breonna Taylor situation mm -hmm. and, and, and black people learn how to come together. Mm -hmm. You know, when I started seeing all these people out here marching and mm -hmm. I was like, wow. Wow. I've right. never, wow. I've right. never experienced this in my life. Right. Now I love people like Malcolm X, mm -hmm. Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. They, they, Malcolm X has this, this on this movie that they did mm -hmm. of him. Right. right. And he was standing, he stood on the podium and it mm -hmm. was millions out there and he put mm -hmm. his hand up Mm -hmm. and he did like this, and everybody turned around and started walking. That's right. That was powerful. This is not a drill. But we do not have that kind of power right now in the world. Right. So as you're speaking about every, you know, black people being more aware and mm -hmm. coming together, mm -hmm. how do you think that's even possible? It, the, 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 the candid answer, you know, not the canned uh, corporate answer, um, is that, you know, unfortunately that's still uh, one of the most challenging uh, aspects of being a black entrepreneur. Um, you know, what I was alluding to as it relates to the issues that you were referring mm -hmm. to just now, uh, many unfortunate incidents that, that led to what I call the summer of social change. Yeah, I, uh, you know, simply said after the summer of social change that I'm going to put more time, more energy, more effort into homie cannabis because I don't want to be the brother that's, uh, you know, just always standing on the sidelines uh, complaining about uh, the lack of opportunity, mm -hmm. but rather be someone to step up to the plate. Right. Answer the call to action. Yes. And create an opportunity. Yes. And then uh, if I'm able to break the glass ceiling and get through the door, mm -hmm. then, uh, you know, if I'm rooted in the hood and the projects, uh, the opportunity that's been extended to me 
uh, at the corporate level, I can then turn around and extend some of those same opportunities uh, to those like me right. and those who support me. With regards to drill further down on, uh, on your question with regards to, to our community, I say this, and this is very imperative uh, for people of color, particularly men, to understand this. This is a direct quote passed on to me. You know, I've learned this, uh, like many things that I've studied with regards to Jay Prince. Shout out to Jay Prince, uh, my uh, former mentor uh, and boss was the late Butch Lewis okay. in boxing. And uh, really? I used to work for Butch Lewis okay. uh, when I was, you know, 17, 18 years old, when I was a student at Howard. Obviously, Jay Prince has been involved, heavily involved in the boxing game. Uh, you know, so, so Jay has a quote in his book, The Art and Science of Respect, that talks about when you believe in something bigger than yourself, you can do something bigger than oh, yourself. Man. And uh, I would encourage everybody to take, uh, take the time and make the time and grab the money to go get the art and science of respect from Jay Prince. I will expound on that by saying this, remember this, a candle loses nothing when it lights another candle. Right. A candle loses nothing when it lights another candle. And so often, uh, people of color, uh, particularly men, uh, just men, it's a male thing, uh, particularly black men, because we're struggling from the back of the pack and the back of the bus and the back of the line mm -hmm. to begin with, we, in, we don't understand the concept that as you begin to matriculate and navigate and do move forward and move your individual financial needle and, uh, forward and acquire different things in terms of stocks, bonds, annuities, and all the material possessions, you feel like you can't light another candle. And even on the way up, there's this constant focus on comparing and contrasting yourself with another brother. Do I have more money, a better car, better suits, uh, more women, or find a woman, a wife, to the point where you feel like you can't help another brother or support another brother to get at the level that you're, you're at, and God forbid he passed wherever you think you're at, okay? The, the brothers that will hate on me the most are the ones that will make a self-inventory of themselves and a self-assessment of me. Right. The ones that will support me the most are actually the ones that my, my working class brothers, my middle class brothers, my hood brothers, my project brothers. Why do you think homie cannabis, other than me being from the hood, is the brand uh, mantra is project inspired, hood approved. Because I'm telling hood. people when it comes to cannabis, weed, reefer, the streets decide what's hot and what's not. That when it comes real. to cannabis, no amount of marketing and branding and advertising is a substitute for banging pot. Always remember I said that, but coming back to, to, to the point about us supporting us, mm -hmm. you know, it'll be the brother that'll pull up a couple years ago, may pull up and see me, oh, brother, uh, got the Maserati, the, the, the 2019 big boy Range Rover. You drive Range Rover. It, the, all, 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 <laughs> all, these, all, these, all these other things. Hey, I done liquidated everything to pay for homie cannabis. Right. So, hey, hey, I'm walking now. <laughs> you know, catch me in jeans and Tim's. You know, I just got cleaned up, you know, because, you know, I want to make sure I'm, I'm respectful and reflecting yeah. that image yeah. uh, for black cannabis. That I said I would, I respect it. and uh, and respect uh, my mom and uh, my aunt's uh, wishes. That hey, you know, we we invested and bankrolled a lot of money in you, and there's a certain image that goes along with being hey, we want you to be capable, competent, college educated, and clean cut. That's the image we want you to yo, be. Yo, 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 big you know? shout out to moms. Big shout out to my mom. And that right. That's right. All yo, moms. big shout out, yo. Let me yeah. give a, let me give a big shout out to my moms, yo. I know you watching. I know you watching. That's right. This this is what your son doing. That's right. This is what we doing over here. That's right. You know, he's uh, doing big things. Yeah, one hundred. He's doing 100, big 100, things. One hundred, yo, one hundred. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I look at this interview as as two strong black men with a vision. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you definitely got to have a vision. You know, and let me just put it out there, yo. Mm -hmm. Even my production team. Mm -hmm. They're black too, mm -hmm. <laughs> and they got a vision. I've been. They I've got been, a vision. I've been, I've been big uh, on that. I'm glad you mentioned that. And that uh, the team of folks that's working, uh, you know, with me and for me, you know, I got the whole uh, Rainbow Coalition, uh, you know, going on. 
you know, uh, Latinos, uh, Native American, blacks, you know, uh, my lead attorney and primary attorney at uh, Murchison and Cumming. You know, she's a strong black sister, legal eagle. Uh, the folks who do my uh, IT digital web, uh, you know, there are two Asian uh, ladies. So, you know, I've tried to make sure that my team is, uh, is really a multicultural team because I don't believe you can uh, privately or publicly stand on a soapbox yeah. and preach a sermon about inclusion and diversity uh, and not actually be a boss and practice it. Yeah. So I want to make sure that uh, I continue to practice what I preach yeah, with 100. regards uh, to that. But certainly, you know, going back to the, that last thought, uh, we were talking about us, we've simply got to be more supportive and more respectful of each other uh, as a community. Yeah. Particularly, I mean, I, it's beautiful to see my sisters and black women come together and do some great things. But as men, uh, a candle uh, loses nothing when it lights another candle. We got to stop sizing each other up and stop trying to measure each other and stop acting to do things in reverse engineering out of spite. Meaning this, once they realize and recognize that a brother is behind a certain product mm -hmm. or brand to then make the conscious decision to not buy it. They will buy every brand of cannabis on the shelf, but once say, they figure say, out, say it again. wait a minute, say it again. it's a brother from the hood, <laughs> it's a brother from the hood from Howard University, and he owns that brand, or, or, or he's got something to do with a, a branded partnership with Blackwater, will say, you know what, I'm going to go to the nearest dispensary and try 20 brands, but it's not going to be that one, because guess what, I don't want to see him eat. I don't right. want to see him maybe get a bigger house somewhere in Summerlin or Henderson. I don't want to see him, uh, you know, uh, you know, start wearing uh, $1,500 suits. The $1,000 suits won't be uh, good enough. Right. You know, I don't want to see him pull up uh, uh, on Las Vegas Boulevard, uh, somewhere Sahara Boulevard, uh, you know, uh, uh, rocking something, uh, 2021 uh, Mercedes with the, with the Batman uh, 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 doors. <laughs> oh, no. They don't want to see that. So they're like, no, I don't, I don't want to see him eat. But understand this. This is the most important thing I'm going to say in this entire interview. I said earlier, I am on a mission. The mission is about us. It's not about me. The issue, the, the mission is all about us. It's not about me. I'm just the catalyst. I'm just a tool in the toolbox trying to get through the door mm -hmm. to help facilitate us getting through the door. Don't make it about me. Keep your focus on the messaging. Keep your focus on the brand and supporting the brand. I didn't do this to just uh, further enrich myself. Right. I'm trying to enrich the culture, Thank enrich you. my people. So, you know, this mission is, uh, you know, is, is not about I uh, and it's not about me. It's all about us and it's all about we. Remember, I said that. And I'm not just paying lip service to that. That's real talk. You know, this, this is about us. This is not about me. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just the, 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 the small tool in the toolbox. I see your, RT is your just tool is strong, a, a catalyst. <laughs> your you tool know? like a hammer. Bam. Try, trying, to, trying, to, trying, to, trying to make some change for the culture <laughs> and for our people. And I will say, sometimes when you're trying to make a difference, mm -hmm. really trying to make a difference for the culture, trying to make a difference for your people, sometimes when you're trying to make a difference, you end up making waves instead. Yeah. So I have to walk very carefully and cautiously in many regards. But I just hope and pray that at the end of the day, my people and those that really embrace people of color, those that embrace inclusion and diversity and unity will, will, will support a brand and a company and a messaging and an image that we can be proud of. Hey, well, I'm here to stand on what I talk about. Hey. You know what I mean? I, I stand on my word, man, mm -hmm. and uh, you got my support. Hey, I appreciate it, man. That's real. I, but I need to know about this black water, though. Right? <laughs> you keep looking at me that's, and my, and my mouth dry. That's right, that's right, that's right. <laughs> hey, you know your brother's, tell, yeah, yeah, your brother's me, moving in a uh, Tell me about shaking. this black water, man. Is, uh, you know, black water is truly uh, phenomenal. You know, the, the, the long and short of it is it's very unique. Uh, it's got the fulvic uh, minerals. Uh, no carbs, no dye, no sugar, great tasting. It's really black. And, yeah. <laughs> and most of all, check this out. It's not purified water. It's not distilled water. It's premium alkaline water. It's oh, yeah. 
Oh yeah, it's, it's really black. It's really black and it's really good it and it's like really healthy. Juice. It's really <laughs> healthy. And I'm fortunate enough uh, that uh, in examining a number of products and brands, once again, walk it the way you talk it to say, I started out drinking black water. The next move you make is to say, how can I go from sim simply being, once again, simply a consumer mm -hmm. using the product and consuming the product to begin to make small steps and incremental steps towards forming a relationship. Mm -hmm. So it's gone for me just being an everyday consumer, loving the water, then that became an affiliate. Yeah, yeah. Then it became, now I'm handling wholesale business accounts all of Las Vegas, Chicago, Detroit, Atlanta. If you own a business, church, barbershop, beauty salon, major company, city government, county government, any businesses that want to, 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 to purchase black water, all you got to do is just go to my email, go to my uh, website, homiecannabis.com, shoot me an email at biz at colorofcannabis.org. Biz at colorofcannabis.org. I got the wholesale pricing, free delivery. I can set up other things, the swag, okay. the black water refrigerator, the coolers, everything. Okay. And I am happy uh, that I have a branded partnership now. Mm -hmm. Uh, the owner and CEO of Blackwater, David Bergstein, shout out to Mr. Bergstein, uh, he loves the culture. He embraces our culture. Mm -hmm. And for me, it starts there. And he's got a quality product. As far as I'm concerned, he's got the best damn uh, bottle of water on the shelf. It's not purified or distilled water. You know, some, we keep buying some of the top brands. That 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 see the purified or distilled. Yeah. I won't name them. I Some of the grocery. <laughs> and, hey, since you mentioned it, Google it and see the acidic level of the name he just mentioned. Fiji. Thank I'll you. Definitely check it, yo. That's homework for y'all too. Let me tell y'all. Black water. This water is re it's really the color black. That's right. Like, if I seen this in the cup, I'd be like, bro, what is that? What is that? Yeah, it's, it's got like, the electrolytes like ash in the cup. and minerals. <laughs> if you exercise and work out. Daily use, uh, and it removes the toxins. You know, if you enjoy the plant, any cannabis at all, you got to rehydrate. Yeah. The electrolytes and the minerals. Uh, you know, if you if you use if you smoke cigars, this is it. 8.5 pH. Everybody should be drinking because you establish a plan. What's the end game? I'll give it to you. Here's the end game. You start out as a consumer, then you become an affiliate, then you do a branded partnership. Then you begin to purchase some, some equity in the uh, company. You begin to continue to leverage that in terms of your relationship and sales with the owner and CEO of the company. And then you go back in 2023 and say, Mr. Bergstein, uh, if you're ready to move on, me and uh, some, of the, some of the brothers, we want to buy Blackwater. Most people don't know this. Black Americans, according to Nielsen, spent $810 million on bottled water in 2018. Well, I got like 12 cases of water at home. I ain't buying no more Kroger. What do we, <laughs> what, what, what do we get from a, a ROI standpoint for right. all that money? Right. Now we up to a billion dollars. I didn't say people of color. I said black Americans mm -hmm. spent $810 million on bottled water. Something that, you know, when we grew up, bottle, uh, water is Came free. Water hose. Come out your <laughs> water hose. Your mama's faucet, your grandmama's that was, faucet. That was the you best. mean to tell me black folks got that kind of money to spend a billion dollars on bottled water? Well, if we do, we might as least well disrupt the entire bottled water right. supply chain in America and outright own a bottled yeah. water company. Yeah, for real. You, you can and give this me some is of it. this? Huh? You can give me some of this? Oh, man, I can send it All to right. you. Oh, yeah, check make this out, man. Call. All I'm I got to do is make sure. a phone call. I'm going to make sure that Start I grab Start ordering some of that black water. Yeah. Las Vegas, if you're drinking bottled water, people of color, order black water. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's the best bottle water on the shelf and don't do what just B was talking about earlier now folks find out there's a brother from the hood in mm -hmm. Howard University that has a branded partnership he's then folks are like wait a minute he's doing branded partnerships with companies and homie cannabis is not even on the market oh no no yeah. no I ain't supporting that <laughs> I ain't su I ain't, I'm not supporting him you know I'm talking to American Express now right uh, Cremo body wash 
And, and see, that begins to get into the mindset of folks. They're like, well, wait a minute. Homie Cannabis is not even on the market. Mm -hmm. So how can you be doing branded partnerships with other companies and your company's brand is not even on the shelf yet? Don't get caught up into that. Yeah, yeah. Because let me, let me say this, Because you know what? The, Focus the people... on supporting your brother who's trying to support his people. And everything I'm doing is not for myself. I'm not trying to enrich myself. I'm trying to enrich and educate the culture and educate my people. So get beyond me. Don't make this whole appearance and everything I'm doing and the sacrifice mentally, emotionally, and financially about me. Mm -hmm. Stick to the message. Stick to how I can move the needle for my culture, move the needle and the ball for my people. Right. So don't be the person at home watching saying, you know what, I'm going to drink all 12 brands of bottled water on the shelf. But I'm not I'm not going anywhere near black water, not because it's not healthy and tastes great and is the best bottle of water on the shelf. But now that I know they got a brother from the hood from Howard University and he's got something to do with it. Nah, I yeah. want to make sure yeah. he don't uh, get a couple of dollars uh, out of the deal. Don't well, think about me. The Stick, ones, the ones, the ones the that matter, man, because right. we always going to have people that's going to hate. Regardless, but the ones that the matter to come around. The ones that matter is the <laughs> ones that's gonna really buy. That's well, right. Speaking about top brand shelves, grab that right there. Yeah, man. Yeah, this, grab that right this there. This is what I wanna. I wanna know about. Yeah, I hey. know about black water. Yo, this cannabis, this life's lemonade. Yo, shout okay. out to my homeboy Nova Bless, yo. It, uh -huh. Yo, he ain't only the dope, one of the dopest rappers that I heard. That's he right. got his own cannabis lemonade, and I had you got to taste it. I got to taste you, it. The brother do. was nice enough you, to you extend this cannabis this, this life's lemonade. lemonade. <laughs> it's actually infused with THC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely let me uh, try this product. See, this is networking at its best. Yeah. Because, you know, this is what I mean. Good. If, I, get, like get, I'm if I get through the door, <laughs> I can grab somebody else's hand. It's got, it's got THC in it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That made my toes curl, y'all. <laughs> this is pretty good. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> this is pretty good. It's I got to give it to the brother. Yeah, yeah, This yeah. is pretty good. Yo, yo, reach out Life's to me. Life's lemonade, cannabis. I'm going to get y'all the info. I'm going to tag it info. on this post. Yo, mm -hmm. y'all, make sure y'all reach out and get some of this. It's fire. It's mm -hmm. fire. Now, if you ain't in the cannabis, he got regular lemonade, too. That's but right. So it should be no excuse. Yeah, and no excuse. If you don't like the plant, you don't want any THC yeah. in your lemonade, the brother has regular lemonade. Yeah. So support. Yeah. Don't pay lip service. Reach in your yeah. pocket and support. Yeah. You're supporting every other brand. Just like I told some people uh, about Black Water. It's not available in a lot of retail uh, uh, outlets, mm -hmm. uh, but they have a preferred uh, vending deal with uh, Amazon. Don't also be the person that you already know about Blackwater. You're purchasing Blackwater, but you decide to continue to purchase it from Amazon right. out of spite. Just right. because I got something to do with it now. <laughs> I mean, you just won't buy it. You're going to continue to buy it. But even though you can get it cheaper from me and direct from me with the same free shipping, you just, nah, I got to continue to support Jeff Bezos and yeah. Amazon. You just want yeah. to intentionally do it out of spite. Right. Don't be that person. This yeah. is not a drill. Don't be that person. Hey, well, support let me the say culture. this, y'all. Definitely hey, support the culture. Hey, I love this culture. water. I love, I love this lemonade. Yeah, it's great. This is good. But but let me say this right here, y'all. Like, if you come on the Just Be Show, let's make a deal right now. RT going to give me a case of this black water. I got full access. I got full access to this water right here, you feel me? I mean, not to this water, to this lemonade, my best. See, it's so good as miss. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, but look, if you come on the Just Be Show, I'm going to have some of both of these, yo. You come on the show, I'm going to bless you so you can get one of each and test it out. You going to like both of them. This scared me, but it's bomb. It's bomb. And this right here is definitely the best lemonade that I've ever tasted, hands down. It's better than, what's the, what's the town and country, country club, something, <laughs> whatever in Walmart or Smith's that I be getting. You know what I mean? This right here beats it hands down, whether it had cannabis mm -hmm. in it or not. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? 100, man. Yo, big shout out to my homeboy, Nova Bless. That's my dog. He be yeah. showing me mad love, man. So, hey, man, the way that I like to end the show is, mm -hmm. and I mean, you've dropped so many gems, it's ridiculous. I feel like I shouldn't even have to ask you this, but I'm going to anyways, because I want to know, man. But if you wanted to give one piece of advice to the whole world, mm -hmm. 
not just our community, mm -hmm. not just the urban community, mm -hmm. not, not, not just the cannabis culture, mm -hmm. but just to the world, man, what would that piece of advice be? Whether it's uh, business It'll or anything. personal or romantic. I is, don't know about romantic. I don't is, know. Is just be, be <laughs> honest. Be honest in what you do. Uh, operate uh, with uh, some integrity. And be a straight shooter. Uh, you know, I'm in a, in a space uh, that is still illegal at the federal level. And uh, it's not a lot of people that fly straight. Just like in the movie Tony uh, Montana and Scarface, you know. He was, Tony was talking about, you know, it's very hard to find people who fly straight. Same thing in American Gangster with Denzel. People who fly straight. Um, and just flying straight is just about operating with some real character and integrity and honesty. And yeah. So whether it's uh, personal or whether it's business, I always say, you know, try to be a straight shooter. Don't try to be, just be. It shouldn't be that hard to begin with. I like you know, that. This is not a drill. <laughs> be a straight shooter. Yeah, yeah, yo, yo. Yeah. Let me let me say this, y'all, just to end on a on a this is, has been a great interview, first of all, man. Let me mm -hmm. let me say thank you for coming and blessing the Just Be Show. Mm -hmm. Real talk, man. You you're very, very knowledgeable. And you dapper. You, I'm gonna be like yeah. you when I grow up one day. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna get out of these t-shirts. I'm, I'm, re I'm, I'm repping the coat. You no, know I mean, I'm gonna get me I'm a just be coast. suit. Something is gonna I'm be pink and black. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be out here fly. I'm, the, <laughs> I'm just trying to rep the culture. Yeah, man. For my brothers um, and, and my sisters. Yeah, That's man. You, you've definitely came on here and made a statement. You almost took over my show. Let me say that. You almost took over my show. It's your but show, you know baby. what? I'm glad you had. Yeah, the, the message needed to be heard. Yes. It, it, and I hope that all of you have listened, mm -hmm. you know, and do me a favor, yo. I want y'all to tell me what's the best message that you were able to grasp onto and hold on to and something that you're going to use in, in, in your future. You feel me? Because he did. He really, really dropped a lot of gems, yo, 100. Mm -hmm. And let me say this, y'all. Don't be a hater. Be teachable. Be coachable. Shut up and listen and understand that if you really want something, you really got to go for it. And just like he said when he threw, you know, threw my name in there, just be honest, just be straightforward. And last but not least, you got to smile, laugh, and definitely motivate. Inspire one to inspire all. And laugh, drop it. Hey,